Defenders of Islam insist it is a peaceful religion. Others disagree and point to the primitive treatment in Muslim countries of women and other minorities. So let's discuss this now. We're joined now by Reza Aslan, a scholar of religions, professor at the University of California, Riverside, and the author of Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. Listen, does Islam promote violence? Islam doesn't promote violence or peace. Islam is just a religion, and like every religion in the world, it depends on what you bring to it. If you're women are somehow mistreated in the Muslim world? Well, that's certainly true in many Muslim-majority countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia. A violent person, your Islam, your Judaism, your Christianity, your Hinduism is going to be violent. There are Buddhist, marauding Buddhist monks in Myanmar slaughtering women and children. Does Buddhism promote violence? Of course not. People are violent or peaceful, and that depends on their politics, their social world, the way that they see their communities, the so, way they see so, themselves. So right. and I want to play for you this clip from Bill Maher's show, Justice Friday Night. Here it is. But... If vast numbers of Muslims across the world believe, and they do, that humans deserve to die for merely holding a different idea, or drawing a cartoon, or writing a book, or eloping with the wrong person, not only does the Muslim world have something in common with ISIS, it has too much in common with ISIS. There's so much talk, you can applaud. Sure. He went on for a good five or six minutes uh, about that, talking about how uh, women or circumcision for women, uh, not respecting the rights of women, not respecting the rights of gay people. And what's your, what's your reaction? And then we'll talk. Well, I like Bill Maher. I've been on his show a bunch of times. He's a comedian. But, you know, frankly, when it comes to the topic of religion, he's not very sophisticated in the way that he thinks. I mean, the argument about the female genital mutilation being an Islamic problem is a perfect example of that. It's not an Islamic problem, it's an African problem. Well, I mean, wait, 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 because he says it's a, hold on, hold on a second, because he says it's a, a Muslim country problem. He says that in Somalia... Yeah, but that's, yeah, and that's actually empirically, factually incorrect. It's a Central African problem. Eritrea has almost 90% female genital mutilation. It's a Christian country. Ethiopia has 75% uh, female genital mutilation. It's a Christian country. Uh, nowhere else in the Muslim, Muslim majority states is female genital mutilation an issue. So you don't think that there's anything more, there's the justice system in Muslim countries, you don't think, is somehow more primitive or subjugates women more than in other countries? Did you hear what you just said? You said in Muslim countries. Mm. I just told you that Indonesia, women are absolutely 100% equal to men. Mm. In Turkey, they have had more female representatives, more female heads of state in Turkey than we have in the United yes, States. But in Pakistan, Stop women saying are, things like in Pakistan, Muslim countries. Women are still being stoned. And that's to a death. problem for Pakistan. So, You're in right. other words, so you, let's okay, I, just, you know, I just want to be clear on what your point is because I thought you and Bill Maher were saying the same thing. Your point is that. Muslim countries are not to blame. There is nothing particular, there's no common thread in Muslim countries. You can't paint with a broad brush that somehow their justice system or Sharia law or what they're doing in terms of stoning and, and female mutilation is different than in other countries like Western countries. Mm -hmm. Stoning and mutilation and those barbaric practices should be condemned and criticized by everyone. The actions of individuals and societies and countries like Iran, like Pakistan, like Saudi Arabia must be condemned because they don't belong in the 21st century.
again, these kinds of oversimplifications, I think, only cause more danger. There is a very real problem. ISIS is a problem. Al-Qaeda is a problem. These militant Islamic groups like Hamas, like Hezbollah, like the Taliban have to be dealt with. But it doesn't actually help us to deal with them when instead of talking about rational conflicts, rational criticisms of a particular religion, we instead so easily slip into bigotry by simply painting everyone with a single brush.